Hi guys and welcome to a little later live stream than normally but I had hot oh, this sounds so scary <laughs> it's like thunder and stuff going on here in Budapest which is really cool so um, today's live stream I think is just gonna be short I, I recently I recently asked you guys about it's lightning outside. <laughs> so I asked you guys, what what does grounding mean to you? And one of the reasons I asked is because people my whole life said, you need to ground, you need to ground, you need to ground. And I really have been trying um, in many different ways. And for me, for me, what I realized was I can't ground in, in, in this form that other people say that you must ground, you know, eating meat, putting on red socks and <laughs> um, be more human or whatever. So when I feel in or use black stones. So when I feel into how grounding works for me, it's to want to be inside of my body it's to want to live it's to want to feel life and for me to feel life is not to try to fit in it's not to try to be more human or do more normal stuff it's to be myself it's to follow my heart my feelings it's to use or be one with the stones that i love so the funny thing were that yesterday we were measuring which stones will be best to have on my bracelet, you know. And I didn't tell this guy anything. I just looked at him and I just let him do his thing. So I had like five bracelets on. Only five. <laughs> and, um, and he was like, oh, this is good for you. This is good for you. This is grounding for you. This is not good, etc. And the funny thing is that the two bracelets he said this is really not good for you was the one who normally are very grounded. It was with these um, lava stones and black stones and and whoa, that was really lightning. Um, and uh, I, t I forgot it. Yeah, and these grounding stones, helping the hormone system, stuff like that. And and the stones that were grounding me, he said that was good for me, were these angel stones and aquamarine and, and very, very light vibrations. So what that means is just that for me, grounding is whatever resonates with me. For me, grounding is what makes me feel at ease inside of myself and makes me feel like wanting to exist you know and to have borders it's not actually it's not what i'm best at in the world not at all but to create borders and standing up for yourself is really important with this foundation thing and as if um you are like me not really able to feel your borders always I, you know i i do know what I need. So if I work a lot for two days, if I help a lot of people, I, I know that I need some time to just go running, go look at the flowers, go just be me, whatever that means. So I have time to come back into my body. And um, yeah, that was the conclusion. And thank you guys for sharing uh, with me what grounding meant to you. It was really cool really cool so hi guys du skal finde dit mentale angersøs så er begrænsningerne irrelevant i got you bro that's mental anger enough for me it's really crazy there's like lightning max out here <laughs> So this other thing that has been uh, there have been up in the, the workshops lately. Um, it's about patterns. It's about f relations to our parents because many people are influenced by um, by how they were raised, by how their life started, and 
and I see many people suffering because of this. But the truth is that we chose our parents and our grandparents chose our parents chose their grandparents so in some form we all just we all just chose each other so we can't blame one or another for whatever happened to us because we wanted this experience and and if that's the fundamental if we are aware of this we can stop up in this moment and we can realize okay guys <laughs> It's not something done to me, it's because I wanted this experience. And hold on to that thought. Next thought. Allow yourself to fully feel what you felt as a kid. If you felt abandoned, allow yourself to feel this abandonment. Write everything out, all your anger, all your love, all your lack of love, everything. Write it out of your system. And, and fully just surrender to those feelings, this hurt little child inside of you. Allow it 100%. When you've done that, then look inside of your mother and your father. Look inside of them, beyond your own ego. Just put yourself in their shoes and feel how, how is it to be them? How was it to be them when you were a kid, when you were grown up? How... How were their life? How did that start it? Where were they in their consciousness level at that point? And when you are there, go one step further back to understand why your parents have the condition they have. Look inside of your grandparents. Where do they come from? What terms were life presenting for them? How low consciousness level did they have at that time? And how did they learn to deal with emotions? How did they learn to deal with love? Did they even know what love was at that point? So when we step into the shoes of, of our aunt sisters like that, we come to understand that the needs we have of love and the, the expectations we have of love or what we should get from our parents doesn't necessarily mean that that was something they learned that they knew how to be or deliver. So if you look at the consciousness level at that point, how should they be able to provide something they did not know about? When we look there, we can come to understanding the picture better and, and, and we can come to this part of, of actually forgiving them for what we've been blaming them for. And through forgiving them, we can come to love ourselves as well because of course, we are not perfect. They wasn't perfect. We are not perfect. We're not meant to be perfect. We're meant to be a little bit messy in order of getting to know ourselves better, in order of living life. And the only... Oh, there's so much lightning going on. <laughs> so cool. Oh, sorry. So I, I totally forgot we were talking about. Mm forgiving ourselves oh yes so the only reason that we can become free in this now as we are craving i guess as, as people want to be free no is by forgiving ourselves by accepting ourselves by being okay with whatever we've been through by allowing ourselves to know that yeah i've been messy yeah i've been breaking people's noses so what I wasn't more conscious at that level. I, I did not know better. Now that I'm more conscious, now I got a choice, now I know better. Now it's up to me to make the choices, which is um, feels most right to my heart. <laughs> so, mainly, mainly this was what I really would like to share with you guys today. And... Um, and this this thing about oh i'm glad Helen. i'm glad that you feel it makes a lot of sense and by the way the whole groundation thing just step by step today i guess i was not grounded i walked into a door i i dropped the plates all over the place and i was like hmm okay i'm feeling it <laughs> uh what if you know that you and ex ex what if you know that your ancestors maybe or some of them were 
folk af in their conditions um, at the time then would have nothing to forgive. Selina, I don't understand. Sorry, that they were folk af? What is that? Is, is it a culture or... Oh, I have to I have to turn something off. Two seconds. You guys, uh, Celine, just tell me that thing in the meanwhile. I'm gonna turn this off. Maybe make background music. I made it. I, I always make tea and I forget to take it off, you know? So <laughs> there's tea everywhere. Um, sorry. Let's see. Uh, woken up. Enlightenment. Okay. What if, what if you know that your ancestors or some of them were working up and uh, in their conditions at the time would there would be nothing to forgive? Uh, but where res by the living conditions in the past. Um, so the thing is, let's call it awakening. In this in this time, people are awakening up, right? But because that we are more conscious, it doesn't mean that we're perfect. Because we're more conscious, it doesn't mean that we have shifted the turns inside of our body yet. It doesn't mean that we are 100% healed or people don't still let the ego control. The awakening part is just the beginning. The living part, the, the shifting from day to day, from moment to moment, that's what it's all about. And, and yet, if we look into the conditions that they have um, or had, their, their energy was also in a, if I look at you, Selena, when the energies were so different, their their belief systems were so different. So even that there was this awakening thing going on, they were still so linked to the old vibrations, um, which make them see halfway clearly, halfway illusion, but not able to see the whole picture without fear. Anyway. Uh, one tattoo makes a difference between physical and mental family connection. Our mother will be proud of your knowledge right now. Oh, <laughs> well, you go share it with our mom, no? <laughs> I love you so much. Uh, hello, Elisa. I love the pyramids inside their circle. Greetings for Cairo. Hey, Cairo. <laughs> well, pyramids... Um, means a lot to me. It means a lot to the whole planet, actually. And um, and we will be more and more conscious about this in the in the future, in the soon near future. I got it. Great, Selena. So We were talking last week about this time being crazy and the energy being crazy and I do feel that everything became a bit softer the last week, no? How does that feel for you guys? Because for me, for me it does feel like things soften up a lot since last week, but a lot actually and, and I feel my heart more, but so much is going on in this world right now and, and people are really, really in their rising of their consciousness, they are still afraid of letting go. They are still afraid of stepping out of this pain body and go through whatever pain needs to be gone through. And it's funny because 
it's always such a double thing, you know? We, <laughs> we are afraid of going through the pain, so we stay in pain every day. It's not logical, guys. <laughs> so it's really just going through it and um, oh, Rowan energy gets more pain, but I also feel more pain disconnection. Yes, sadness, so to say. So after the storm, like imagine, imagine that we are fighters. I love this, you know, we are fighters, we prepare for the fight. Ooh, we're getting there, it's hard, we're training like crazy, we get the fight, we do the fight, after the fight, your body hurts like crazy, literally like crazy. Normally, you can go like 10 rounds uh, doing a training, nothing happens, you don't even get a headache, but then you have these four rounds in a ring, <laughs> and you come out and your neck is like broken, and you're thinking, she didn't even hit me, you know? So the thing is, when we go through what we go through, we are, we are doing it, we are transforming, and then when the peace appears, boom, you feel it in one form or another. And for you, Rowan, you just need to allow it. You need to allow it and stand stronger within yourself. Stand up for what you feel, what you believe. You need to set these borders we are talking about, you know? Borders, borders, borders. And I'm repeating it because I suck at it myself, so nobody's better than others, <laughs> but it's just a subject which is really important for our grounding and for our well-being. It's not an egoistic thing. Actually, by setting borders, we're not only helping ourselves, we're also helping the other person. Imagine, like, if you look back to when you went to school, oh, this is so crazy out there. <laughs> um, you know, there was the popular kids and there was the, the shy ones and the, the outsider and I don't know what you call it. But those kids who, who don't stand up for themselves, those kids who don't say anything hiding in a corner or just trying to be somebody's friend, what did the other kids do? They completely overruled them, yes? They just made them do anything for them, make them come with the books, blah, 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 blah. So they used them. It's not a judgmentality thing, it's just to paint a picture. So, in order of you setting your borders, you also showing this other person, this is not how you treat people. This is not how you treat me. So it's not egoistic, it's to create a self, and it's really important. We chose to incarnate like in this physical form as a, a individual being, so we need the creation of self. Very important for existence. Um, still a roller coaster. Things keep drifting up inside. Yes. So I think, I think, um, I think it's, I said it before, but this time it's crazy, and it's gonna be nonstop. And, and um, it was a heavy, uh, like insane last week, and now it's it's more uh, at ease. But still, so many shifters going on in such a high speed. For some people, it may feel like, poof, I cannot really follow, you know, it goes too fast. But the thing is, everything that happens, we ask for. We wanted it. And we have been preaching about this shift for so long that we need to just be grateful for it. Uh, can you tell us something about the third eye when it opened? Can you close it anytime you want or open it when you want? Or is the third eye updated in the shift? For me, um, okay, for me personally, I told myself that my third eye is open now and forever. And it will see exactly what it's meant to see when it's meant to see it. It will perceive exactly what it's meant to perceive when it's meant to perceive it. I don't think about opening it up, closing it down, when to use it, when not to use it. I let it be completely pure and natural. I believe that whatever we meant to give, we get for a reason, always. Um, as things are shifting, everything is upgrading within you and therefore also your third eye. For some people, they feel they have the need to control one thing or another and that is purely on their side. But I believe that once you become conscious about your third eye and opening it up, there's no need for opening and closing it. Just let it be a natural part of you. So 
you are not a part. It's not like one chakra is active now, now the other chakra is active. Oh, I'm only gonna use the root chakra now. Because then you're not whole. Allow it, just be one with it, it's part of you. <laughs> okay guys, um, this was all I wanted to share with you right now in this thunderstorm. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I will drink my tea and prepare for uh, prepare for it next week, by the way, because next time we talk together, uh, I'm going to be in Bosnia. I'm going to be back in Visako. I found this sweet little shelter I'm going to stay uh, at, at the Sun Pyramid. And I really look forward. It feels like i just been missing those pyramids. I've just been missing the people, the area the vibration everything and i i know i need to go there so it's gonna be great i really really love it um yeah so i cannot wait to share it with you guys and i'm gonna shut it off now but if you have any comments any questions whatever whatever you want to share just feel free to write the comments below and yeah, remember to just love yourself in this process. Life is supposed to be messy. Sometimes it hurts, sometimes it doesn't. And it's good. It's this human experience kind of thing. And what I realize is heavy is not that heavy. When, when, when you no longer are emotionally stuck by the past inside of your system, when you dissolve that, then these heavy feelings, they pass by. But they don't stay, they don't stick, so it's just a moment of ah! And then you can let it go and come back to your true self, come back to your inner peace. So guys, that was, that was it for today and um, I look forward to talk with you again next week. And I love you, that's all. <laughs> Do you And in here we say... See ya.